Welcome to Cosmic Cantina. I'm your host, Melissa Tittle. So tonight we're going to Mars and I have an amazing interview with Billy Carson with never before seen videos and uh, images that he has supplied just for this podcast. All right. So let me start off with some articles to set up the Billy Carson interview. So as you may or may not have known, but it's pretty big news, uh, we have successfully flown a helicopter over the surface of Mars. Um, lots of publications are talking about it, but I took a CNN article titled NASA's Mars helicopter successfully completed its historic first flight. Uh, quote, now 117 years after the Wright brothers succeeded in making the first flight on our planet, NASA's helicopter has succeeded in performing this amazing feat on another world. Nice. Um, that was the associate administrator for NASA's science mission. Um, he also added, while these two iconic moments in aviation history may be separated by time and 173 million miles of space, they now will forever be linked. The two, uh, he, he talks about the, uh, the bicycle makers of Dayton and the Wright brothers uh, creating a flight on our planet. And then, of mm. course, NASA's helicopter on the surface of Mars. And this is pretty amazing, but in my mind, just because we do all this research and uh, on possibly secret space programs, that this might not be the first flight on the surface of Mars. Okay, okay. Go um, on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just lightly speculating. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> it's a light lightly. Lightly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so... Uh, we talked about this in a couple other podcasts, but there is a lot of stuff out there where uh, organizations and countries are, are building uh, hotels that are going to be on Mars and, and they're, they're, they're building this whole space in infrastructure. And then, you know, the military is like, we're going to have a, a base on the moon so we can get to Mars as if we haven't heard this before. Right. Um, sure. But now it's, it's, it's just happening overnight. So in um, mm. 2019, SpaceX published um, a timeline for a Mars colony that Elon Musk wants to build. Now, of course, this isn't new. Uh, as you know, um, Werner von Braun, he, he was the first person to really sketch out how he was gonna build the first colony on Mars in 1960. Right. Um, but um, this is really amazing, these images that uh, his team has put together. Elon Musk has a grand plan for getting humanity out of the confines of Earth, setting off to the moon, Mars, and even further reaches of the solar system. Musk has regularly estimated that humans could establish a city on Mars as early as 2050. Oh, wow. He has led the development of the Starship, the rocket designed to refuel and relaunch using liquid hydrogen and methane. Um, and he hopes that this will uh, encourage the first commercial flight and then, of course, build this colony on Mars in 2050. So it's just in the last year, we're just ramping up to like all of a sudden we're going to be on Mars as if it as if it can happen now, but it couldn't happen then. Um, <clears throat> wow. Um, in astro an astronomy site called Universe Today, Space and Astronomy, they have published lava tubes on the moon and Mars are really, really big, big enough to fit an entire planetary base. Whoa. We haven't heard this before, right? If you've been following the secret space program, you know that there's uh, not only underground bases in uh, underneath the earth, but there's also underground bases in the, uh, the moon and Mars, you know, this is, isn't everything's new, but... hollow. There's bases everywhere. It's awesome. There's bases <laughs> everywhere. But now, but now they're publishing, solar. they're publishing these, these articles and saying, Hey, they're so big down there. We could build a base. Wow. Yeah. Um, sure. And so yeah. lit literally this, uh, this article says, could lava tubes on the moon and Mars play a role in establishing a human presence on those worlds? Possibly, according to a team of researchers, their new study shows that lunar and Martian lava tubes might be so enormous and easily large enough to accommodate a military base. So, so it's out there in the mainstream. But I had to interview Billy Carson. If you don't know Billy Carson, he is a researcher. He's featured on uh, lots of documentaries, including some stuff on Gaia. But he also has um, some amazing photos that his team has gathered from all the activity that's been happening on Mars. Here's the interview. All right, Billy, welcome to the show. How are you? Fantastic. Thank you for having me back. We're going to talk about Mars. So yeah. with the new images coming back from the rover, uh, have you and your team discovered anything new that, that mainstream is not picking up that's happening on the surface of Mars? Well, I'll tell you, I think they're picking it up, but they're hiding it in plain sight. So the Mars Perseverance rover just landed a couple months ago, and it's um, already sending back some amazing images. 
And so NASA has been posting these images on their server, on their public site for everyone to download. And everyone that they post, like on their main page, for like, oh, look what the Perseverance rover took an image of. When you start zooming into all the rocks, all of a sudden, some of those rocks turn out to not be what looks like real rocks. There's like geometry, 90 degree angles, things that look like they were broken or snapped off of something else. Uh, things that look like they're sticking up out of the mud that may have more underneath the surface. So it's pretty interesting. Uh, you know, it's kind of like just hiding it in plain sight. Here it goes, guys. So we've downloaded now probably about maybe a couple hundred of those images, and we've gone through them. We probably found at least 50 to 80 anomalies already just from the Perseverance rover. Hmm. Incredible stuff. So do you think that they're posting these images and saying, this is the surface of Mars, isn't it amazing? Uh, but they're also really trying to get people to pick up on the fact that there might be evidence of either an ancient civilization that was there or a civilization that is there now. I think both. They're trying to show that there was an ancient civilization and right now. And so the people that are in charge of these images and the servers and everything else at Caltech, um, I really do believe that they're in a very sneaky way, very sly way, kind of just putting it out there for us because they probably have some type of a agreement where they can't really fully disclose what they believe is there. They can't make any statements about it. They can't say, this is what it looks like, or look guys, this object doesn't look like it's a rock. So they kind of just throw things out there. Sometimes they obfuscate certain images. Sometimes they really don't obfuscate everything in the image and leave something standing out. So they'll obfuscate everything around the anomaly, which doesn't make any sense to some people, but then the anomaly is sitting right there, crystal clear. So I think it's a way they're just kind of really disclosing it to us in a, in a backdoor kind of way uh, because they probably can't make any official statement. Mm. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> now, let's, uh, talking about maybe ancient civilizations or a recent civilization, uh, there was a, an article posted uh, several months ago about how they've discovered that they think that the moon has uh, a lot of these kind of underground tunnels naturally formed by the formation of the moon. Uh, same kind of stuff, uh, caverns, tunnels, whatever you want to call them, that are also inside of Earth. Uh, so the next thing is, do these exist on Mars? Um, but of course, all that makes me think of is underground bases, right? Because exactly. we, have, we, we don't even have to um, speculate that there's underground bases in, in the world, because there are, because we know that they exist. There's maps of them. Um, people have been inside of them. Yeah. So... What do you think of the idea that there's under, possibly underground bases in Mars, possibly underground bases uh, on the moon? What is your thought process on that? I believe it makes total sense to have an underground base on the moon and Mars, especially if you're an advanced civilization and you're inhabiting a space body like uh, the moon or Mars, which has uh, reduced amounts of atmosphere, reduced amounts of, reduced amounts of atmospheric gases, lower levels of gravity on both of those planet bodies. Uh, and then all of a sudden, you look at the Arecibo ground penetrating radar images that that telescope took of the moon, and we can see now 30 meters beneath the moon's surface. And that's, again, just one of those, here you go, public, take a look at these images that we took of the moon with radar, and you start to see structures underneath and tunnels and openings mm -hmm. underneath the surface of the moon. The, some of these are like in 90 degree angles. So I know they're saying that they're naturally formed. But how much of it's natural and how much of it really looks artificial to me, it looks like somebody actually created that interior. And for Mars, it just makes sense, again, if you're trying to have a breakaway civilization, even if it's not from Earth, if it's even from another civilization, it doesn't matter. It's mentioned in so many ancient texts that people have actually gone to Mars in the Mahabharata, in the Sumerian uh, uh, cuneiform tablets is talked about, Akkadian, the Babylon epics as well. So obviously someone in some time period, in my opinion, had gone there. And if you did, and the atmosphere was just as harsh as it said it was in the Sumerian tablets, why not build an underground base? Why not go lower into the ground where you're protected from more radiation, where you could probably create warmth? Uh, you can build, you know, and have a, like an underground base there that could have structure and be set up. And then you can only come up to the top surface for other things like research, investigation, mining, looking for resources or whatever. It just makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, regardless what is there, it, it seems that 
all the resources on Earth, whether it's our country or other countries, are really making a push to go to Mars uh, and inhabit it. And there's our hotel that's being built on Mars, supposedly, in the next couple of years. I mean, it's just craziness. Yeah. It's as if um, we went from we can't live in space to now somehow we're inhabiting it. So yeah. um, your perspective on this, this where they're just kind of dropping these photos, it, at some point, they're going to have to come clean with what's been happening on the moon and Mars. Yeah. What they are you, at some point. Yeah, what do you, um, you know, so that kind of, I guess, leads me to my final question yeah. is basically, what do you think is going to happen if they release that there is a civilization there or that we've been there already and we couldn't tell you? Like, how do you mm -hmm. think, one, how do you think they're going to release it? And two, what do you think the, be, the implications will be for our civilization? Okay, well, I think first they're slowly releasing information to us in terms of the barometric pressure, the atmospheric pressure, uh, the, uh, the amount of oxygen, all of a sudden there's oxygen all over the place. There's a rain cycle, there's clouds, weather patterns. Now mm -hmm. they're saying the soil on Mars is better than the soil on Earth for growing crops. So they're just trickling it on into us. And now we have Perseverance Rover, which has a new science machine on it that's going to detect life on Mars. That's going to be announced within the next few years that they found alien life. It's going to be bacteria. But uh, or something microscopic like that, but they're still still going to announce alien life. So they're gradually building us up to the point where, oh yeah, by the way, you know, in ten more years, yeah, there was an ancient civilization here. Meanwhile, the billionaires are all making their move to Elysium, which is, by the way, an actual name on Mars for an area uh, where they're going to be building or, or probably have already started building the infrastructure, I believe. Uh, and I think that, you know, if if we find out that there was a civilization on Mars or maybe is a civilization on Mars as, as a civilization, I think that we're going to start asking a lot of questions like, who were these people? Where did they come from? That's going to open up a can of worms into the religious texts, first of all, because all the religious texts have these people in them, the gods that fell from heaven to earth and so forth. Those are the GG. And then the next thing that's going to happen is, what types of technology are you guys picking up over there? How can we utilize this technology for us to make our lives better? What kind of power sources did they have? And how come you're not releasing that information to us? Are you, what are you doing? Are we the new Christopher Columbuses? Are we killing these people? How come we're taking over their planet without, who is, who's in charge here? Who's giving the approval for this, for this breakaway civilization from their side? So mm -hmm. all these questions will come up when you don't tell people and you keep it hush hush, you just go and do it, whatever you want. And then by the time they're done with their domination plan, it's too late. Nobody can, you know, can, can kick them off. Nobody can make a move. They've already moved in, settled in, and created their own civilization. Mm. And, and do you think that's been happening since the 1960s? I truly believe that the United States and Russia collaborated and colluded way back in the 1960s. I think long before uh, JFK made the famous speech that we need to go to the moon and do the other things, I think we were, we were already on Mars with a very small remnant. And I think that we've been building that remnant into a nice, a nice sized civilization since then. And uh, the X-33B military shuttles that take off for two years at a time from Earth, well documented, they're still, they're cargo ships. I believe they take cargo to Mars. That's what I believe they go. For two years, they come back every two years. Hmm. Wow, I didn't think of that. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Wow, well, it, we'll have to see what happens. But... Um... Is there anything that the, the viewers can, can do? Like, what if that happens? What if they say, hey, we have this civilization, and there's nothing you can do about it? I mean, what, what does that leave us as actual Earthlings? Yeah. Is, that, is, is there a positive to this at all? Well, you know, I think that it, the, the positive would be to look at it from what their perspective is. We're going to, you know, we, meaning the, the billionaires, we're going to abandon Earth because obviously there's about over 100,000 billionaires looking to move to Mars now on a one-way trip, not coming back, including Elon Musk. This is well documented. Now, why would they leave Earth, the creature comforts of this phenomenal planet with butlers, maids, all the vacations they can ever want, all the beautiful scenery and everything else, the, the fantastic temperatures. They're not going to go live in a tin can in a suit until they die. There's an infrastructure waiting on them uh, for these people when they get there. And in their mind, they're building a brand new civilization where they're going to eradicate, uh, you know, uh, disease and and the monetary system and start fresh again, leaving us to rot in, in our own sewage, basically. But so the, the positive side to this is we as the people of this planet need to say, okay, wow, 
they're getting out of here because they see us as a cesspool. Let's unite. Let's come together. Let's finally put down all of our differences. Let's let's delete this divide and conquer that they've programmed us with. Let's delete that software program in our brains. Let's unite and let's all become one, love one another, and build the tranquil, peaceful, green civilization that's our birthright on this planet. Don't you guys think that's so interesting about the fact that he was saying that billionaires are getting together and they're trying to leave the planet and establish a colony on Mars um, and and that, you know, he has proof that this is happening. I mean, what do you guys think of that? Yeah, it's so like them. It's so like those <laughs> fucking billionaires just to oh, ruin it people. for everyone here and then and then uh, back on out when it gets a little tough here. But yeah, mm -hmm. I that was interesting because I when he said that, I was like, is that true? And then I uh, dove yeah. in and yeah, it's sure enough, they are they are talking about it. Um, obviously, Elon Musk is talking about sending, what was it, a, like a million people or something? Mm -hmm. Something like that, some crazy number of people. But obviously, you know, you got to have the, the, the sweet tipple, the money to be able to, to make that happen. Right, um, right. Yeah, Unless but that's what I'm sort of saying. It's happening thing. so fast. It, it, it's like this concept of living on Mars was created by Werner Braun, Braun, Werner Braun Braun in the 60s, and plans don't look really any different. But now it's like, oh, we're going to do it in two years. We're building a hotel. Yeah. Boom. I still don't Just know like how they plan on. I mean, the atmosphere is pretty inhospitable for, for people, for people among the. Uh, the earthly variety. So I don't like what. What are their plans here to set up like a terrarium or something? Or well, that's one of the plans. But they could go underground. Ooh, Ooh. Mm -hmm. interesting. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I imagine I they've thought of this, and they're not just going to send people and be like, "Oh, right, the gas." <laughs> but it is <laughs> now. I think the they other, got that figured out. But um, the other super interesting thing that Billy mentioned was like it is like a it's a one way ticket. Like you're not coming back. Like if you right. make it to Mars, best of luck to you. Yeah, uh, I don't have that in my DNA. I don't feel that urge to climb Everest. I don't feel that urge to get on a spacecraft and go to Mars. Nope. Like I, I admire it. I'm not making fun of it, but like I'm good. I'll stay here on the lush yeah. Earth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree.